born for such a time like this. International Alleluia Ministries presents Royal Steps with Dr. Gabriel Ho. You see, I knew the power of speaking the Word of God. That's power. Everything else is negative, but that equals power. So I threw his little body over my shoulder and said, You will live and not die! What the devil has given you and turn it into good. Welcome to Royal Steps. I am so glad you're watching today. You know, the Lord has been speaking to me regarding why we called our program what we called our program Royal Steps. And I just want to clarify something with you. This is Royal Steps to the throne of God, the throne of grace, T-O-G. You know, it's wonderful to have your children sit at your feet, but it's even better to have them on your lap. So we talk about the throne of God because of my personal experience of going to heaven and visiting heaven. I'm not ashamed of it. Don't care who believes me. Don't care who does because I know where I've been and it changed my life from being in the world to in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He'll do whatever it takes to whomever. As long as there's somebody praying, and by golly, it's our job to get as many people to follow us because we're following Jesus into heaven. So welcome to a royal steps to the throne of God, and I pray to God I get to see you in heaven. Now, let's go to one of the best stories, I think, in the whole Bible, especially in the Old Testament. I just love it. This is the story of Joseph. It's found in Genesis chapter 40, chapter 40, all the way to the end, 50. If you've never taken the time to read it, open up the Word of God and it will make you laugh and it will make you weep. It is such an emotional story because it's so relative to so many situations in our lives today. You know, Joseph was a handsome young man, very attractive, the Bible says, and very spoiled. I'm sure while his brothers were working, he sat back and sipped on his little, on his little smoothie you know, and telling him to make sure that they were working, looked at dad and dad looked at him and whatever he wanted, daddy gave it to him. He was definitely favored by God, but he also had favor of just about everyone he came into contact with because he had such a positive personality. The reason God used Joseph, one of the reasons God used Joseph is because of his positive, fun personality. He loved to make people enjoy life because he enjoyed life. Well, here he is enjoying everything about life. His brothers have to work. He doesn't have to work. He has the favor of his dad. He missed his mom. Remember, his mom died when his brother Benjamin was born. But at least he got to taste his mother. But he still had, uh, he still had Leah and the other concubines. He still had a woman uh, motherhood, if you will, around him. So he had it made, pretty much made. There was no stress, no problems. And come and go as he please, whatever he wants. And all of a sudden, the Lord says, I have a bigger call for you. And it's not being babied by your parents, right? Listen to this. This is so amazing. <laughs> I love the story of Joseph. Joseph, this sweet man now, is being called on to play security one day. He is, he is asked to go check on his brothers. Well, I'm sure his brothers didn't want their brother who was spoiled to come check on him. Uh, that's the last thing they wanted to see. Uh, but, but the Lord said he left and he took his favorite coat and his dad had just made him this special coat because he was a special child. And colors are in, in the Hebraic mean different colors and in the, in the, each one has a different um, meaning and name and revelation. We'll get into that on another situation, another message. But right now, Joseph is walking into the wilderness, into the wilderness where there's dust and snakes and snails and, and scorpions with a robe on that is so expensive. And so he was a little out of place, but that he wanted to show off his favorite coat to his brothers. Look at what dad made me. They didn't have any, just him. So he's attractive. He's spoiled. He has a great attitude though. He's called by God and he's on his way to check on his brothers. So now as he walks into the wilderness, the brothers see him coming from afar off, the Bible says, and says, what? 
I don't think so. That is not him. Uh-uh. So the Bible says they were plotting from a distance. They hated him. They were jealous of him. Uh, they, 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 you know, jealous of, you know, if we, could you blame them? The, the young child was spoiled and really never had to do anything, but they had to do it also. They were kind of plotting against him, but the plot got thicker the more they talked. So this is for some of you. Joseph did not ask for this to happen to him. Joseph was just being himself. And the enemy plotted against him in more ways than one while you're at a distance, even walking to, to bless them or check on them or whatever it is. Listen, as he got to the place, they threw him in a pit, this pit that had no water, remember? It, it, was, it was a desolate place where had someone else not come along, he would have died in that pit because they took his, his coat and washed it in lamb's blood and said that, you know, that said, took it back to the father and said that this is his blood, he died and what have you. But the point is this, Joseph now stepped in to his call. What didn't look like his call, God said, it is your call. So there are some of you watching that you're saying, Lord, this doesn't make any sense. There's not enough of, not enough of this. There's not enough of that. This is wrong. This has to be fixed. We need this. We need that in order for me to get to this place. And God's saying, would you just work with me because I'm working on you. God was working on Joseph. His goal was to have him to be vice president of the one of the largest nations on earth that would save a nation of famine save them so they wouldn't die of starvation, but he had to change his attitude in the process. He had to adjust him a little bit. He had the right spirit of, of, of go lucky and happy and positive. He had the looks for it, but he needed to change his heart. He needed to change his attitude. And it took a, quite, a, quite a few years, but God put him through experience after experience because he knew once he got to that place, he needed to have completely he needed to be completely set free from his past and the old Joseph and take on the new Joseph. Amen. So now what happens to Joseph? Here is the interesting part. He steps into a new, a new chapter of his life where all he has around him, his daddy isn't there to help him. His mom isn't there to help him. His younger brother, Benjamin, isn't there to help him. And his brothers who hated him aren't there to help him, but he's got nothing but enemies around him. Have you ever been in a situation where you step into the call of God in life and you have nothing but negative around you, nothing but enemies, nothing but people that want from you instead of helping you? Oh my, my, my. Am I talking to somebody? Come on. So now this man is in this pit waiting to die. And who comes along but another enemy? Oh my, you know, sometimes we want some help, but when the wrong person offers their help, we want to reject it because they don't look like the right person to help us. They don't fit the criteria that we expected. But God says it doesn't matter. <laughs> he says it doesn't matter because the Pharaoh's ch chariot had come along. The Egyptians, which were their enemies at that time, they killed the, the Hebrew slaves. They didn't want anything to do with them. So here he went from the enemies of his brother to a bigger enemy. And had he not had that second enemy, hello, come on, had that second enemy not showed up, Joseph would have lost his destiny. Joseph would have died in the pit and the chapter would have ended there. But God had much greater. So he lined up Joseph's enemy to come and pick him up. So what may look like your enemy may be your blessing in disguise. So once you're in the will of God, just know, Father, I don't have a choice but to depend on you right now. And even if it looks bad, I know that what God, what they intended for bad, God, you will turn for my good. Today's message is for you. What the devil intended for your bad, God will turn for your good. Even if it means a house full of enemies, even if it means a, a place just full of where do I go, what do I do? But you know what that does? It humbles you. And that's all God needed to do for spoiled Joseph, who he had a big call in his life, he had the right, he had the right spirit, but he needed to change his attitude and humble him. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Joseph gets picked up by his second enemy and they drive him to the place where he immediately is tested to see if he would steal. And he did not steal. He thought, I, 
I own a cattle on a thousand hills. My father, he didn't think he was going to stay there. He, he knows he's rich. He knows he's wealthy. He's got a dad that owns everything. He just had a, a coat. He might have a few negative brothers, but he's probably thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here one of these days. Everything's going to be fine. My dad's going to come looking for me. You can imagine what was going through his mind because he knew his daddy was his backup, right? Well, he didn't know that his brothers had lied about him and his dad would not be coming for him because he assumed he was dead. So your enemy will lie, lie, lie about you and tell completely the opposite of the truth to destroy your destiny. Know that what the devil intended for bad, God will turn for your good. Now, not only does Joseph step into the slave position, but he gains favor. Why? Because he had such a positive spirit. He would look out at the hills and he'd say, do you see those hills over there? My blessings are greater than them. And they would say, oh, you're a dreamer. But he knew the power of his words. He was such a good, positive man. So now, Joseph steps into the place, and as you well know, the story that he was tempted with fornication. He was, it was adultery for her and fornication for him. And he knew, I need to get back to my dad and I am not going to do anything wrong in God's eyes or in this Potiphar's eyes, in this man's eyes. So he rejected the wife's attempts. You remember the story where Potiphar's wife came after him over and over again to where it, it was so seducive and seductive. Have you ever been on the internet where every time you pop something up, it's sex? Isn't it disgusting? I wish, I wish with all my heart that sex did not sell. But unfortunately, the devil wants to make it that way. He wants anything negative to make money to keep everyone away from really obeying the word of God, away from fornication, away from adultery. Anything that is holy, he wants to shun it. So he'll cause the opposite to be productive. So now Joseph knows this. Joseph was no dummy. Joseph turned down Potiphar's wife. And finally, she grabbed a hold of his coat and he ran. By the grace of God, he ran. But then people ask, well, why did he go to prison for two years? Why? Well, let me tell you something. Maybe that was the best place for him at that time. Perhaps the wife was going around telling people negative about Joseph and telling more stories. That was his third enemy. First, it was his brothers. Now it's picking up, you know, the, the, the chariot came and he was sold into slavery. That was his second enemy. Now his third enemy is Potiphar's wife who lied about him, sent him to prison for at least two years. And he's thinking, why am I here? But you know what? At least he had a meal. At least he had a roof over his, he his head. And at least he was not committing fornication. Hello. Think about it. God spared him and still raised him to the top. Everywhere he went, I'm sure with the with Potiphar perhaps believing a little bit that his wife said maybe it might be true and the wife gossiping about him, he may have very well been better off in prison than not. Oh my, my, my. Think about it. What the Bible does not tell. We sometimes have to read between the lines and understand, listen, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And what if that happened today? If the man got off free and was innocent and half the world thought he was guilty. You know, he doesn't have much of a future, but God had to pull him away. Now, here's a key word for most of you out there. Do you want God to use you big? Do you want him to be pleased with you? Do you want him to look at you and say, I can send that person anywhere, any place, call on them anytime, and they will be there for me. God as your friend. You know that song that says, you know, he's our friend, God is my friend. Do we really he is my friend and I am his friend back and forth. Do we really know him as our friend? Do we really, can he call us at three o'clock in the morning and say, help, I need you to pray. There's a little girl over there. You know, God relies on our prayers. His, his, his avenue into earth is prayer. Dr. Gabrielle Hope and I Am Ministries began with a one-on-one -on -one visit to heaven with the Father and now an impartation of this love, compassion, power, and joy is imparted to all those that attend the I Am meetings. Healing, miracles, and liberty manifest during these meetings, but the highlight is when unanswered prayers come into fruition immediately. People from across the globe are lining up to meet the God that changed the life of Dr. Gabrielle Hope. But it's the devil's job to get us too busy 
and too angry with each other to get along. That jealousy and pride has to weave itself in there. Enough is enough is enough. Father, I need a GI. I need a God idea. Will you please impart to me something that will set me financially for the rest of my life? Ask me for more. Ooh, I just smelled the Holy Spirit all over her. Pray in tongues, Father, I thank you for these God ideas birthing. So listen, what the devil intends for your bad, God will turn for your good. Amen? So, it, it, you know what? This is the best part. Just make a list of everything negative that the devil has thrown at you. Hold it up to him and say, every one of these are destroyed in Jesus' name. Your list might be a book thick, but what you need to do is realize that God had a plan for every single one of them, even if those problems were self-induced. Doesn't matter. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says, what the devil intended for your bad, God will turn for your good. Why not? Speak it until you see it. You speak it until you see it. All this negative stuff, Lord, I need you to turn it around for my good. You did it for Joseph, and you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now do it for me, and I need you to do it quick. Amen? So this is what happened to Joseph. He's in prison. He interprets the dreams. Even in his low state, he still used the gifts that God gave him. He could have had a bad attitude and said, I'm tired of being in here. I don't care what your dream was. I don't da 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 But he still cared to help someone else in his need. In his need, he interpreted their dreams. And it took a couple of years, again. And suddenly, God said, okay, if this little, this, this little cupbearer isn't gonna remember Joseph, I'll have the king, the Pharaoh, remember Joseph. So he caused Pharaoh to have a dream. Oh, I love this. And finally, within 24 hours, Joseph went from the pit to the palace for the rest of his life. But it took that time of quiet and getting alone with God. I mean, you, you, you can't get much more quiet than the sweet prisoners. How many of you am I speaking to that have your television turned on, that have done something wrong or innocently accused, or, or, or you actually say, I did it, and you're sitting in prison. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Please do not grow weary in well-doing. Joseph broke out in 24 hours. God did it for him and he will do it for you. Whether you're guilty or innocent, that's between you and God. We love you anyway. Come on. This is take this time and grow close to the Lord. Take that time and read your Bible. Take that time and worship. Take that time and learn real respect. Not half respect, not when I'm in the mood respect, not when I'm not upset respect, just no matter what respect. God had to teach Joseph respect in the cell. Amen? Change his attitude in the cell. And suddenly one day, I'm sure he was doing his work because he was the head of the prison now again. Everywhere he went, they loved him because of his positive attitude. And suddenly the butler's shaking. He says, I remember a man. He interpreted my dream. Had Pharaoh not, excuse me, had Joseph not been in prison, this would have never happened. So he had to be there for this to happen. So now he gets pulled out. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? He gets pulled out of prison. He has his prison garbs on. He probably hasn't shaved in a while. Whatever, whatever it was, straight from prison to the king because there was no time to waste. Ah, so now he stands in front of the Pharaoh. And when Pharaoh asked him the question, he didn't say, Sure, I have it. Picked up his sippy cup just like he did with his dad. Sure, you know, I'm good. He had no attitude at all. He said, wait, let me ask my God and I will give you your answer. He let him know this is not me giving you the answer. It's not about Joseph. It's not about us. It's about our father using us. So what Joseph did he humbled himself in front of all the government officials, the Pharaoh and everyone else that was in there. He let them know, 
I cannot do anything without the voice of the Lord speaking to me. Oh, it was so precious. And when that time came, as you well know the rest of the story, he had such wisdom that the Pharaoh was amazed that he was the only one around that could interpret a dream. Why? Because he spent time with the Lord. There's other, yes, he had this gift before, but this was a different, this was a different attitude standing in front of thousands of government officials and humbling himself and saying it's the Lord. He could have easily exalted himself to get out of prison, a free ticket out of prison, but he didn't. Pharaoh was so impressed, he became vice president overnight. He was rushed to the green room. They took his prison garbs off, they shaved him, they clothed him, the Bible says, and put on king's clothes, handed him the king's attire and said, this is the Pharaoh's attire and said, now they will know you as governor. No one you will answer to but me, he says. So I can imagine Joseph saying, oh my, my, my. I can imagine as he's getting himself garbed up and they're sitting there taking care of him, he's thinking, had this not happened, had this not happened, had my brothers not rejected me, had the, had the man not come along when I was in the pit, had the lady not thrown, lied about me where I was thrown in prison, had, 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 the, had the man not left and forgot about the dream, had all these things not happened negative to me, this ginormous positive blessing and the call of God and the purpose of God would not be here now. So know this, if you want to document your negative, you better document with a positive next to it because every negative has two positives. So if you want to write down your diary of depression, you go right on ahead, but you want to write next to it your diary of destiny double good for your trouble. You will get double good for your trouble. So for every negative, you write two positives and watch God be a man of his word. He gave Job double good for his trouble and he gave Joseph many times more. Ah, but my favorite part of this story is after, we'll, we'll get into it on another, on another message, but right now, after his father realized he was alive and the, the family got brought back, here's what happened at the funeral. Joseph is the vice president. Had Joseph not called his family there, they would have died and there will not be Israelites today. There would not be the Jewish beautiful people, Hebraic race today because Joseph spared it. He had to get pulled away from his family, gone through a few negatives, but it was worth it when he saw the end result. Ah, strong man at his father's funeral. The Bible says his brothers repented. Finally, after all those years, they realized, oh my, he is the vice president. He could, he could kill us at any time. We could get our heads cut off, go to prison, and our father's dead. And Joseph, even at that point when he had every opportunity to punish his brothers or repay them vengeance, he looked at them in, in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, and I love this part of the story. He said, no, no, no. The Bible says he wept. Do my brothers really think I'm still like that? Do my brothers, don't my brothers see the new Joseph? Don't they realize I'm a humble Joseph? Don't they realize that I don't need all that family stuff? I have his family. Don't they realize I'm the vice president? Don't they realize I have a big responsibility? Don't they realize I have the fear of God in me? I'm a different man. And he cried, the Bible says, and he looked at his brothers and he said, what you intended for my bad, God has turned for my good. Don't you see it, he said? And he turned to the rest of them and he said, send my brothers to Goshen. He sent his brothers, his enemies, those that turned on him. They repented and he sent them to the best land in that area, Goshen. They didn't have to pay taxes. They didn't have to look for food. They didn't have to want for anything. He spoiled his brothers in return. Ah, oh, I love it. So his father had spoiled him, if you will, and he in turn spoiled his brothers and his father sent him to the land of Goshen. And this is the best part of it. I just love this part. When he, when he sent them on his way, they, they, they went about their life just as calm and as peaceful. The Bible never mentioned them again. So obviously nothing big enough happened to where we needed to read about it in the word of God. But I find this interesting. 
He never hired a single one. He kept him at a distance and loved him at a distance. Wisdom. Please, I'm speaking to some of you today. It's not just about family. It's just about those that have betrayed you. You are to forgive them. You must forgive them. You have to forgive them. Why? Because Bible says you must forgive to be forgiven. But that doesn't mean you put your trust in them. It means you put your trust in God alone, as Psalm says, amen? So you put your trust in God alone. And if they had the God in them, he would have trusted them. But the Bible never mentioned that the vice president hired his family to work with him. He loved on him, spoiled him, and kept him at a distance. So there's a lesson to be learned in all of these things. But right now, but right now, forgiveness is so easy. It can be so easy. Why not forgive? It's like taking a fresh shower, an oasis in the desert, when you can just let that off your chest. They'll be over there having a good time and you'll be in bitterness. So just forget about it, forgive them and say, Lord, if I can't pick up my bat, I forgive them. But I want them to stop what they're doing because they hurt me and I know they hurt others. That's very fair. So ask God to pick up his bat and go for you on your, he said, vengeance is mine. So I want all of you who are watching today to take the time to invite Jesus Christ into your heart. You know, the Lord says that if we draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto us. So I want you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. Holy Spirit, if there is anything in my life that should not be there, get it out and add what should. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Help my family make it to heaven. Help me live a holy life and help me live to please you for however many days or years I have left on this earth. Pray that and welcome to the family of God. I want to see you in heaven. And I thank you for watching the program. I pray this helped you and know that what the devil intended for your bad, God will turn for your good. If you'd like a copy of today's message in four CDs, give us a call at the 1-800 number at the bottom of the screen. International Alleluia Ministries, 30262 Proud Valley Parkway, Suite number 377, Laguna Niguel, California, 92677. For more information, visit our website at www.iamgo.org and follow on social media. We love to pray with you. Give us a call.